Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and with this little geometric uh, workflow, this is for the rhombic tricontrahedron, I mistakenly thought I had shared the workflow for this one, it popped up in a question on the beautiful internet, so we're going to have a look on how I make this, uh, we can of course, let's have a look at Wikipedia page, we can use the dihedral angles and stuff like 144 degrees, and then create uh, one face and move that around and so forth. But I like to do stupid uh, geometric workflows. You see my early videos, you can see that. There are some interesting things of this. Uh, it has 30 faces, uh, rhombic faces. But the interesting thing about the rhombic faces is, is down here. The ratio of a long diagonal to the short diagonal of each face is exactly equal to the golden ratio. That meaning, let's move up fusion here again. The ratio between the diagonal, the short one, and the long one is the golden ratio. And we can easily do that with the pentagon. And this thing is riddled with pentagon. And you can inscribe a cosahedron and dodecahedron and stuff in this. But we will do a quite short workflow creating this. The aim of a workflow is creating this face here. If we turn around, we have the same fa face opposite here. Like mirror symmetry. So if we get one done, we can loft that. And then mirror and then do some circular patterns. So let's get going. I have already saved the file. Remember the save. I will make a new component so I get uh, things compartmentalized. Uh, sorry, Rotri. The famous warrior from the Greek wars. Rotri. Rhombic Triconchahedron. So we have a component. Let's open it up. We're going to start by creating a sketch. I'm simply going to do it on the front plane. It makes it easy in these ways. We're going to do some polygons. Polygon circumscribe so polygon let's do our first one gonna tab over and say five size we need a pentagon gonna mark all of it turn it into construction geometry because i don't want this um, profile popping blue all the time gonna make this horizontal vertical and i'm gonna add one constraint if that's to the corner here i make the one on the right here to the region point so that doesn't move around you can see two lines are turning black showing they are now controlled but there's still no dimension to help us with that, we need one more polygon, create polygon. We need one more pentagon, tab five, like that. Once again, I'm going to mark it, turn it into construction geometry. And now we're going to do horizontal vertical. This is going to be orientated the other way. Basically, this, this side now vertical. I'm going to use the equal constraint between, I'm going to use the same edges as I had the horizontal vertical that um, keeps all the constraints on the same edge, like that. They are not equal, but I can still move this around. In fact, you can move it around like that, yes. I'm now slightly going to move it up somewhere around here. So this vertex here is slightly to the right of the region point here. I'm going to do a line. I'm going to immediately now turn this into construction lines. I'm going to make a line from this vertex to zoom in and check I get a vertex. Good. I'm going to make a line from this vertex down to this vertex. We can use some different constraints. I'm simply using horizontal and vertical. So this is going to be horizontal. This is going to be vertical. Let's open up our sketches. Interesting enough, you can see that Fusion is now defining this as fully defined. Or telling us but it's not really there's no dimension but that's basically the rest of it uh, so we need to add a dimension i'm going to change one thing also i'm going to mark this line and turn that into a normal line this line here is going to be the short diagonal of one of the faces so this line here is the same as the short diagonal of his face here so now we can dimension it in some different ways we can dimension this here uh just do it just 75 to talk if I dimension it like this, this means that the short diagonal here is going to be 75 mm, and the rest of the dimension will be driven from that. That dimension doesn't really feel that useful. I want to dimension it from this face to the blue one over here, basically the diagonal, the, the thickness of the polyhedron looking from flat face to flat face. So I'm going to delete this. Sorry mark it delete I'm gonna hit d for dimension once again and i'm gonna mention from the region point to this line here that's gonna be our uh, di short diagonal of the face of the dimension here so this is gonna be half of the dimension we want so let's see i want to make it a 100 millimeter and then i simply divide it by two 
this is going to give us a polyhedron that has 100 millimeters from one face to the opposite face across uh, through the center of the polyhedron. So we are done everything we need. We're going to finish sketch. We're going to create an offset plane. Offset plane from the same. So we're going to move a plane from here out to where we want to sketch the face. So we can select this one. Distance to object, find a corner or, or an end point of this line can be either of these. Select this, click OK. The good thing uh, by doing offset plane, but it maintains the origin point. You can see when we create a sketch and do that on this new fabulous plane we just created. You can see that the origin point here is still connected to the origin one in the middle. You see if I turn that on, they are aligned. Not that important this one, but I like construction planes, specifically offset planes where they are stable. P on the keyboard for project. We're going to project in the line, the only line I made a normal line. That's, that's why I turn it normally for visibility. So we'll select that line. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to hide our first sketch because it's done its job. I'm going to do a look at, so I'm rotating everything over. I'm going to mark this line and turn it into construction geometry. It's just to help me things. Now we're going to do sketching our arms. So we're going to create a line. We're going to do a line from here, somewhere out here, down to here. We're going to do another line from here and up to here. And then one more line from here to here. And of course, the last line is the long diagonal. So we're going to mark it, turn it into construction geometry. Kill fusion is going to be horizontal vertical. So it locks it in. And I'm going to use the midpoint constraint between because these diagonals needs to meet at the midpoint. So this locks things down in. So we only have one degree of freedom now to move things around and that's in this direction. So how do we get these two lines to be from the golden ratio uh, or the, the the ratio between the two diagonals should be the goal ratio. How do you do that? We can use a polygon. We can use the pentagon once again. So we're going to do tab over, do five. Once again, so we have a pentagon, mark it all. I'm going to turn it into construction geometry because I want to, want to mess up my beautiful little polygon here or my beautiful romp. Step one, uh, coincident, uh, this corner here to this here. Uh, this corner here to this here so things now turn uh, black as you can see like it was fully defined but still it's not really fully defined we can still change things here so what you need to know is that the ratio in, in inside a pentagon is that the edge here in relation to the diagonal between two vertexes so this line here, that's the distance from vertex to vertex. The ratio between these two lines are the golden ratio. So we can use this. We're going to do an equal constraint. The line we wanted to use for uh, the golden ratio is for short diagonal. So we're going to select the edge of a pentagon. And by doing that, everything, we can't move things around. Everything is locked down. And we now have the ratio of a golden ratio between these two diagonals. We're going to finish sketch. And we're going to do a loft, a solid loft. We're going to fire a little loft command down here. Select the little uh, of a nice rhombic profile we created. And the center point of everything, or origin point. Going to hit OK. I can now hide the sketch. So what we've done now, let's go back to our here. We had created this face here, and we have lofted it straight into the origin point. So step one we're going to do, I'm going to make the opposite uh, face. I'm going to S on the keyboard and find my mirror command, which I have added here to the design shortcuts. You can, of course, find it up here and uh, modify and stuff. But S, mirror, we're going to mirror bodies. Yes, this body. What mirror plane is going to be the YZ plane, like that. We can do a join, hit OK. Let's open up the seal. We still have one body. So you can see we have created this face, and now we have the opposite face. So, with that done, we're going to start to do circular patterns. We know there are three around this, and there are going to be five around this uh, edge here. This here is, of course, we can have a look at this. Along the short diagonal, we have three faces. The long diagonal, we have five faces. So, hit some SM keyboard. You see, I have added a rectangular pattern here. Now, in Fusion, you can change type of patterns. Go simply click on this, switch it over to a circular pattern. Select the bodies, select the axis, and I'm going to do where I get as much done as possible. So I'm going to select this here, the edge that is connected to the long diagonal. 
I'm going to tell Fuchsia I need five because we have five faces here. So I'm going to mark and change back to a five. Hit OK. <coughs> and we get a lot of bodies. So I'm going to just select all of them. Do a combine. Make sure it's join. Hit OK. Once again, S on the keyboard, do my pattern command, switch over to circular, select the bodies. We only have one body now. The axis is now going to be the opposite edge. We did this edge on this side. So we're going to move things over, following the long diagonal of this face, and select the edge opposite here. And once again, change quantity to five. We're now going to overmake the body. There are too many bodies here, but it doesn't matter. We're going to combine them. Hit OK. You can see we have a basic shape, but we have a bunch of bodies. So we're going to do a window selection and we're going to add all bodies. Make sure we have all bodies selected. Of course, we can do this in the browser. Select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom body and then do a combine. Uh, one target for four tool bodies and join and we're going to hit OK. And we have our little rhombic tricontahedron. And we can do an inspect to check. So from this here, this face to this face, we have 100 millimeters. And of course, we can do some strange faces to reduce selection. Just select this one and move over and do this one. It's also 100 millimeters. Close it. Turn on the sketch. Make dimensions visible. Oh, you're far out. Let's say we want to make a bigger one. We want to make it uh, 223 total divided by 2. Yeah, we can change our dimension. So we have a parametric model. Let's hide that. Just do inspect and check. Inspect this face and this face here. And we have 223 millimeters, a lot of zeros. So this is the workflow I use for creating the rhombic tricontahedron. Hope it's useful for you. Take care and I hope to see you around. Goodbye.